Now, Fumi Iwatani was a man that loved to be out in nature, feeling the wind blow, watching fires on well in a camp burn, watching the waves crash onto shore. Anything you can think of, he enjoyed. He was he was an environmentalist that loved to see nature. Anything that had to do with nature, he loved. He wrote books about it. He read read books about it. He watched movies, watched everything about it. He loved the development of nature. Nature was so interesting to him. How the waves would constantly push and pull things in and out of the oceans. How the moon was the reason for exactly that. How fires would burn on depending on the oxygen that was around. How lightning would strike and it would be contracted to certain areas. He was fascinated with all of it. It seemed boring to everyone else and growing up that's what everybody would bully him about. But he didn't care. He would grow up to be an environmentalist and would just enjoy nature throughout the entirety of his life. That's until he began writing his second book. A book that would change his life forever. Now Fumi begins to write this said book, but every time he begins to write, it seems like the paper just, just makes the words disappear. It's kind of odd. Every single word, everything he's putting on that piece of paper begins to convert, and then it begins to write itself, talking about the four legendary cardinal heroes, talking about a spear hero. A sword hero, a bow hero, and a shield hero. But these four were never interchangeable until now. Until one hero appeared that used elements, used nature, used various other ways other than just a brute force weapon. And that this hero, but it cuts off there. There's no more writing on this paper, and now Fumi is confused at why this quote-unquote anomaly would just stop. But as he begins to think this, the paper begins to glow, and he's teleported away. Now Fumi looks to his left to see a sword, a spear, and a bow hero. He's confused that maybe he was just sent to the world he was just reading about. The, these knights begin to approach them, saying that the king wants to speak with them and that they were brought here as the four cardinal heroes. They all follow the knights to the basically the kingdom and then the king's throne room. The king introduces himself and then begins to explain about how mankind has been dealing with these waves, a series of demonic invasions, and the other heroes. The sword, the bow, and the spear other known as Ren, who would be the sword hero, Motoyasu is the spear hero, and the bow hero is by the name of Itsuki. These three begin to question why they were even brought here in the first place, especially without their knowledge. On top of that, that if he doesn't reward them properly, he they might just become enemies. Now Fumi, on the other hand, doesn't really mind. He's always been a nice, genuine person, so when they start acting like this, now Fumi is kind of questioning them and isn't sure why they would even treat someone else like this even if they were brought to a world unbeknownst to them. But now Fumi begins to speak saying that his name is now Fumi Iwatani and it seems like he was sent here without a weapon. But Ren does say check out the HUD and maybe he can look at what or who he actually is. Finding out that he is the legendary elemental hero and he explains this to them. They're kind of shocked to hear this, saying that you would think that they would just have, or he would just have a weapon, but now he can, but he can actually control the elements? Now that is interesting. And the king says that that's better than that dastardly shield hero, so luckily they won't have to deal with him. Now Fumi is confused by this and, and asks what the beef is or what's the, the problem with this so-called shield hero and the king says that the shield hero is known as the devil of the shield. He's not a good person. And the king begins to explain that since it's getting late, they'll head to basically their quarters or their assigned quarters, go to bed and then in the morning he'll explain more and even have party members choose who they want to join. 
So that's exactly what the four heroes do. When they enter their room, they begin speaking to each other about what this world is like to them. Any knowledge they have currently, they begin explaining it to each other. But now Fumi begins to talk about he's that he's never been into RPG game. Yeah, I played one a long time ago, but I never really got too far into it. I mean, the mage class was always fun. They begin to say that they can give him, him a rundown the best they possibly can, and they also bring up that it's kind of ironic that he enjoyed the mage class, that it would make sense since he likes the elements so much. And he nods, saying that he's actually in his world, he's an environmentalist, and he observes the elements of, the, of like Earth a lot. And they're shocked to hear this, saying that he must be pretty smart, and he nods, saying that he has a doctorate as well, and he went to college for, I mean, obviously a long time to get that doctorate. They're actually pretty impressed by this, and they say that they'll teach him the best they possibly can, giving him all the information he needs, and for the next day, they all meet up at the, king, at the king's throne room once again. But unfortunately, when they begin divvying up who should go with who, Nafumi gets nobody, nobody at all. But this doesn't necessarily bother Nafumi, he knows how it is, especially in his world of science and also studying and also book writing, he knows that being alone is kind of the pathway to success. You're not going to always be basically with other people and you're not always going to have help. He says that as long as he's properly compensated, he should end up being just fine. So. He's given about 1500 silver and he heads off immediately. He goes to a weaponsmith by the name of Elhard and begins speaking with him, asking about what he can buy, what armor he could actually use, and if he could try and pick up some of or one of his weapons. He grabs a weapon but immediately just breaks off and he can't even hold it. So he realizes that he definitely is restricted to only the elements. But how exactly is he going to be able to use these so-called elements? He's not so sure. So he gets the armor from Elhard and pays him a little extra to make sure that he's in his good graces. Now Fumi then heads off to go basically start killing as many monsters as possible to level up. At least that's what he knows in terms of trying to level up. That's what Motoyasu, Izuki, and Ren told him. When he begins to kill monsters, he tries to figure out a way to activate his power, but he can't. So he starts studying his gem that's on his chest, and then various other things in his HUD menu, eventually finding out that he actually has to choose a singular element. There's various elements that scale off of m a multitude of things. There's water, there's ice, there's fire, there's lightning, there's earth, there's anything you could think of, it's there. Elements galore, but the only thing is, is now Fumi has to choose one. One for now, and it seems like he can choose another after a certain amount of leveling as well. It seems like every 10 levels, he can choose a new element, but these elements are all based on the absorption of that said element, or monsters, or the use of the element. So if he chooses fire and uses it all the time over and over and over again, he'll level it up more and more. But if there was a large amount of fire around, he could absorb that element and gain even stronger fire powers because of it. So he begins to rationally think about this. What would be the best way of going about it? Well, for ice, it would be inconvenient trying to find ice itself. Maybe water would work, but that is definitely a ballpark thought. Fire, he's not so sure if fire is just going to appear out of nowhere so he can absorb it. Lightning obviously would be kind of hard. Earth would be on the easier side. There's earth right beneath them. But how much of, how much land can he really absorb without it really hurting the environment? So he begins to think, what about water? Starting with water would be the most relevant idea, especially because water can change into ice and he should be able to actually use water to get to the ice element as well and then upgrade the ice element exponentially when he unlocks that said ice element. But water is the most convenient out of all of them so he decides to actually pick that one specifically. 
going out to a lake and begins absorbing some of the water and immediately the water begins to shoot up in terms of the XP, going from level 1 to level 3 to level 5 extremely fast and he realizes that he can uh, uh, use water to, to his advantage in a, certain, in a certain instance. He can actually gather up fish using his water, basically giving him infinite amounts of food if he so chooses to do so. Using his powers in terms of the water powers, he begins going around defeating monster after monster, creating this small bubble and suffocating these monsters. On top of that, he can just straight up manipulate water out of his hands so he, bla he can blast them into different things and injure the monster. He's not the strongest at the moment, far from it, but he can use this water bubble to defeat most of the monsters he's been killing, but it is a very slow process. Absorbing them into this bubble takes minor concentration, so he can only do it to maybe three to five monsters at a time, and then it takes a good a little bit amount of time to defeat that said monster. So he really does decide that he needs a party member. He begins walking back to the kingdom, and when he arrives, someone approaches him, offering him a chance at getting a, a party member that would be very useful to him. Now Fumi turns to see someone and he explains to follow him, that he'll show him the way. Now Fumi decides to follow the man and he introduces himself, saying that he is a, the slave market owner and that he wants to offer now Fumi a slave. He's not so sure about this, a slave, I don't know if I can really morally take a slave. And the slave market owner begins to say that, well, slaves are legal in this world, so you really don't need to worry about s such a thing. And Naofumi decides that he'll look around at least. So he does just that, looking around at various monsters, seeing big, small, anything you can think of, and then he stumbles upon something. Actually, someone. Two, actually, things. Two beings that he's actually curious about and asks about this little girl that has these raccoon ears and a raccoon tail and the slave market owner begins to explain that this girl has been in and out of this place for a while now every person that she goes with brings her back immediately it seems that she is just not what they're looking for and she is sicker than a dog and now fumi says that he wants to take her and also this little thing right here. What is it? Oh, that's... Yes, that is a baby bison. But those are very rare. Unfortunately, I cannot sell you that unless it's at least you at least pay me 200 silver. They're very rare, like I said. But I will say, for a hero's discount and how hard it is to train those things, I will give it to you for 200 silver. Now Fumi says that he'll take both, he'll take the girl and also the bison, and he pays him a total of 300 silver as a way of thanking him and commission. But he says that he most likely will not be back, he doesn't like the idea of slaves. But with some persistence from the slave market owner, he does put slave crests on Raftalia and the bison. They head out immediately and he begins to explain to Raftalia and the little bison which he thinks doesn't really understand him everything that's going on he explains that he is one of the heroes and he's actually there to protect them the best he possibly can but he does need help in terms of fighting the waves and he doesn't have any party members they're the only two Raftalia is kind of scared still not really trusting the word of this man but he promises that everything will turn out okay so he goes to Elhard and gets Raftalia a sword and some armor and even gets his bison some, well, some armor but knows that the bison will eventually grow more. And they begin to talk to Elhard, basically asking about if there's any place that they can go that's other than the little wilderness that they're, that's right outside and he explains that Lude Village is a good place to go to actually make a little bit of money as well. So now Fumi and his party head over there. And Rotalia begins to basically just pick up the bison and carry him around and pet him. And now Fumi asks Rotalia if, if well, she wants to name him. Maybe they can name him something nice. And she says that she likes the name Appa. That would be good. And now Fumi says that he likes that name too. And they head over to Loot Village. 
getting a place to stay in the meantime, and the next morning, Appa is twice the size he was. Yes, he was a very small little tiny bison, but being twice the size in one night is absolutely ridiculous, and now Fumi doesn't actually know what's happening, but he does figure out later that for some reason, being with a hero, he has accelerated basically growth, especially with himself. It seems like Nafumi has a connection with beasts or monsters in terms of nature, and now he has accelerated growth because of it. Now Fumi continues to teach Rotalia the ins and outs of basically training after he was able to heal her or cure her of her mild cold and they begin training more and more, leveling up and actually breaking free of Rotalia's fear of blood. But that fear would come right back around, not of blood though, of something else. Rotalia, now Fumi and the bison by the name of Appa begin to go over to a mine a mind that would house a two-headed dog that would bring all the fears back to Rotalia. Rotalia begins to whimper, scared for her life running backwards and almost falling off a cliff. Now Fumi helps her back up and says that that is what she's scared of. It looks similar, huh? To the per or the to the monster that killed her parents, and she says, "Yeah, that it's going to kill them too." And now Fumi shakes his head and says that's not the case. She needs to stand up help them and they can defeat the monster with ease he promises and she does just that slowly standing up and she grips her sword tightly okay master naofumi i I'll, I'll help you i promise so they begin to fight this monster but with water in that cave a lot of it as well it's relatively easy for him to pin the monster down and he does just that pinning it down completely and having rotalia kill it Rotalia doing this actually it helps her get rid of her trauma not to the to the largest extent but now she was able to at least control it and now she feels substantially better with the two-headed monster dog dead it actually pushes Naofumi from a level of 9 to a level of 12 giving him another option to choose in terms of the elements he begins to think Maybe he should choose earth, maybe he should choose air. Frankly, both of them would be the easiest to start leveling up. So that's what he decides. He decides to actually use air, and then next time he'll actually choose earth. So he begins leveling up with Rotalia and, uh, and also Appa. During this time though, Appa grows in more and more size, being that he's now a full grown bison. But not only that, he is a flying bison. They learn this about halfway th um, through the month, and they begin flying around, traveling to different places. Now this is genuinely, insanely beneficial. This is great for just long distance travel, and just going to different places that, that they feel are important. But with that said, a month goes by of leveling, preparation, and all that for the next wave. Now Fumi unlocks more and more skills and even gets high enough level to unlock earth or like the earth element, getting that up to a level of three. His air, his air element is actually at a level of seven and his water element as a level of 10. They immediately after arriving back into the capital, go to Airhard or Elhard to actually get some new equipment especially for their flying bison, Appa, and then also give some upgrades for Rothalia and some simple upgrades in terms of armor for Naofumi. And then they head to the Dragon's Hourglass. When they arrive, they're actually greeted by the three other heroes in which they see Rothalia and Motoyasu tries to make a move, but Rothalia immediately rejects this whole manly thing that Motoyasu wants to come at her with. She doesn't care. And frankly, she's not even a big fan of the other heroes, and she only really cares about Master Naofumi. So, they check how much time is left before the next wave, figuring that is actually 24 hours out before the wave starts. So, they actually head off and begin to prepare, at, especially at Loot Village. They believe that the wave could affect Loot Village in incredibly in terms of how much damage it could cause. So now Fumi does his best using his earth elemental and elemental powers to create barriers to protect the village of loot. And then the wave begins. 
Tons of monsters begin to roll in. Hornets, skeletons, giant zombie-like monsters. A lot of them are actually blocked out because of where he set up the barriers, but some do get through. But they're easily defeated. Now Fumi either blasts them back into, into walls, into the ground with his air, or just encapsulates them with his water. He believes that he can't really make a big difference in terms of the raw fighting power, but he is starting to learn more and more about his bending of some sorts and use of elemental powers, and he actually is able to make a water sword at the, at the level of 10, especially with water being such a high level now. He begins slicing through the monsters and feels that this is pretty beneficial, but obviously ice or sharp ice would be way better. Fire is a more destructive power as well, so power would be or fire would be pretty beneficial. So he's gonna have to make that decision when he crosses the 30 level threshold. But easily, him and his party are able to fend off everybody, gaining a couple levels on the way to defeating everything in the wave, and it seems like the other heroes actually just have defeated the last part of the wave, in which is the main boss, quote unquote. Now Fumi says that that went easier than he thought and it went pretty smoothly, and he he says that he's going to treat Raftalia and Appa to a special thing, whatever they want. And Raftalia says that she just wants maybe a new blade. She knows that she just got this recently, but she feels like she's already out leveling this blade and maybe she can inflict um, her next blade with some power that she might have. And now Fumi does say that there are magical affinities, so maybe Raftalia has a magical affinity that could help her blade. In which she nods, and Appa just wants a new saddle. At least that's what now Fumi assumes when he brings it up, Appa begins to basically jump up and down, being all excited. You know, you're gonna come in really a lot handy, Appa. Especially with traveling to other villages. We gotta meet new people, you know? Appa begins to jump up and down once again, excited at the idea of meeting more and more people. In which, the wave of catastrophe is now over, so the heroes are then treated to a state dinner. In which, Naofumi decides to head over to, especially with Appa because he loves food. Rotalia likes trying various sweets, but Naofumi's not big on trying new food, but just for the sake of them, He'll try whatever they want to try. They begin eating, laughing, and basically having a good time, but that's interrupted by someone that has a foul mindset. Somebody that just wants to cause conflict. Mine. The princess to the king on Motoyasu's party basically begins to tell Motoyasu that the two over there, Appa they call him, the bison, and also Raftalia, they're both slaves, and now Fumi is forcing them to fight for him. In which Motoyasu immediately breaks over toward them and throws his glove on the ground, saying that he challenges now Fumi to a duel. How could he? He have how could he have slaves? That is horrible for a hero, but now Fumi tells him that that's not really the case. Yeah, they have their slave crests on, but he has brought up the idea of taking them off recently. Plus, slavery is legal. But they do do everything they obviously help with in terms of helping him on their own free will. And Motsuyasu refuses to believe this and that mine and mine told him otherwise. Now Fumi looks at her and she just grins evilly like with this evil malicious intent. And now Fumi looks at Motsuyasu saying that he doesn't want to fight him. Motsuyasu says he doesn't have a choice. And the king concurs, saying that a duel cannot be refused, especially between heroes. So, it's then decided. The lullaby at dawn, and well, the fight that is going to be right now, is going to occur. Now, Fumi versus Motoyasu, the elemental hero versus the spear hero. They begin their fights, very quickly actually, and now Fumi looks at Raftali and Abba, telling them to basically just it's okay to calm down and relax that he'll handle this quickly immediately now now fumi begins to charge at motoyasu dodging with relative ease yes he is a lower level compared to motoyasu but his technique is going to be far better than motoyasu's yes motoyasu is strong trying to use his brute strength to do anything but immediately now fumi touches him 
and gets him into this water-like bubble and keeps him there. Okay, Motoyasu, you can choose to quit now and I can let you go. And then you won't have to worry about it. You won't be hurt and you'll be okay. How about it? It's really that simple. And Motoyasu is trying to fight out of this bubble, but literally can't. It seems like every time he tries to swing his his um, spear, he obviously can't get enough momentum to even break free of this barrier. And he can't even poke a hole through it. It's as if it's like an indestructible bubble. But in this case, it's feeding off of Nafumi's level, at least the level in water. It's a level 10, which is relatively high, especially since it can only go to a level of 20. And Nafumi says that he can end the fight right now, but he doesn't want to hurt Motoyasu and tells him to give up once again. But just as he begins to say this, he senses something behind him. Senses magic building up and then gets shot. Wind magic is getting sent at him and he plants his foot directly on the ground and a giant wall comes up behind him and the wind magic begins to just blast into that wall. He tells mine, that's not good. You're not allowed to interfere with a duel. Please stop or I'm going to take matters into my own hands, Miss Mine. And everybody sees this, the heroes see it, and even the king is trying to basically get the nobles and everybody there to basically act like they didn't see it at all, but most of them have, including the heroes obviously, and the heroes want to keep this in mind. But now Fumi says that if they want to cheat, well then he's going to have to finish this quicker than he thought. He begins to create these water-like spikes in the in the water bubble that he's made and begins to close the bubble smaller and smaller. Give up, Motoyasu. You're about to become a pincushion. He begins to make it smaller and smaller, but Motoyasu waves, waves his hand and says he gives up. He lets go of the water and lets Motoyasu out. Good. I'll be leaving now. As he's leaving though, Motoyasu calls out to him, asking why would he enslave those two people or enslave that monster and then Raftalia, but he explains that the whole slavery aspect, frankly, he saved them. So uh, he doesn't understand the whole idea behind that he's getting at. Frankly, it doesn't even sound like a thought he thought of himself, it sounds like someone else has thought of it. He looks toward mine and rolls his eyes. Look. Sometimes you gotta think for yourself. I hope you realize that pretty soon. I'm gonna be taking my reward as normal for, for the wave, and me, Raftalia, and Appa will be heading out. I hope you all realize what just happened here. Now Fumi then leaves with his party after getting his reward, and heads off back toward Loot Village after getting Raftalia a new sword, something that maybe she can affect with her magic she wants to learn about, and then also getting Appa a new saddle that was specially ordered for him from Erhard or Elhard. They then arrive at the, this magic shop owner's shop and begin speaking with her. They begin talking about magical affinities, and she says that it seems like Naofumi has practically every affinity. It's all elemental, and he says he, he knows and that he is the elemental hero, they ask about Rotalia and she said or she says that she has a affinity for light and dark, but there isn't that much she can do in terms of enforcing that magic upon a normal sword. That it would have to be you could say a magical hilt of some sorts. And Naofumi is interested by this and says that maybe they'll have to do some studying. And she says of course and gives them a book for free and Raftalia will be able to learn as much as possible even in a short amount of time. So they hop on Appa and begin flying over to Loot Village and when they arrive they begin speaking with them asking if they have any you could call carts or anything that they can use for storage in the meantime. Nothing too big so Appa doesn't get too tired but something that they can put on top of Appa with a good amount of storage. And they say, of, of course, that they can offer something, and they'll even make it uh, a smaller size, you could say. And now Fumi is happy to hear this, and basically makes a trade with them, giving them a little bit of money, in which they try to refuse, because frankly, now Fumi saved them earlier, so there's no reason for him to pay, but he says that it's really no trouble. He'd actually enjoy paying for this. And they smile, saying that he's one hell of a hero. Now Fumi says that he tries his best, but just as this wholesome conversation ends, 
People begin to arrive, and the sound of horses can be heard from the front of Loot Village. These people, it's Motoyasu, mine, and a couple of the knights, and they begin to say that they are going to take over Loot Village in the name of Motoyasu, that it's a royal decree. But now Fumi says that this is not going to work. Unfortunately, he can't allow them to do such a thing. And if they want to fight again, he can fight Motoyasu again in a duel for that right. And Mine thinks to herself that obviously that wouldn't go too well. And she goes to argue once again, saying that he has no right to even try to question. But one of the shadows of the queen then arrives, giving her something. And it's odd. When Mine begins to read it, she gets mad and frustrated and throws it on the ground. Saying that now Fumi, that they challenge him to a race three laps around obviously around this place but it seems like they don't understand that Appa can literally fly frankly faster than anything here can run but now Fumi's not gonna bring that up he says that he'll ride Appa and that they can ride whatever they want and they'll do their little race around the track um, and then when he wins they'll leave Loot Village alone mine says that there's no way he'll win and well she is very wrong about that. When the race starts with against Motoyasu, Appa just begins flying and begins taking off around around the loot village and finishing the three laps practically instantly. And they're all shocked to see this, saying that he cheated. But the shadows show up again, saying that there was no rule in terms of him being able to fly. And frankly, they did sense some magic on the field, but. It actually didn't affect them at all, but it all came from Mine. Mine made made people use this magic in a way to slow down Naofumi, but since Appa can fly at such an insane speed, it didn't even matter in the first place. So the shadows tell Mine that the shield hero has won this this bout, and they're forced to leave, telling Naofumi to watch his back. But Naofumi says that that doesn't even matter. You're making a villain or some an enemy out of someone for no reason so they end up leaving now fumi rotalia and appa head out to continue their travels but while flying in the air they actually see someone waving them down hoping that they come down to help him so they do just that asking the man what he wants and he asks for a ride he asks if he if they can take him to the nearby town and it shouldn't be too bad so Nafumi says to hop on and that he'll definitely owe them for this ride though and he says that he has the perfect reward for them anyways. So they take off toward that town, landing, and the trader says that he wants to teach Nafumi everything about being a good trader. New skills, he'll introduce them to contacts, he'll even basically give him a warrant for certain quarries at a discount. And Nafumi is completely up for this, learning as much as possible and they're given their first little job immediately after. They're actually tasked to deliver this herbicide to a village not too far from here and it's easy for him to actually catch up. They fly over and when they arrive they actually see monstrous plants all around. These plants seem to have evolved from a seed of some sorts and have overrun the village. So when they land in the village, they begin to explain that the spear hero Motoyasu used this cursed seed of some sorts to end their local famine, but it just sprouted a plant that came alive and began attacking the villagers. And with Motoyasu gone, they have no way of even defeating this monster and they're just gonna all die here. Now Fumi says that's no problem, that he'll basically be able to handle this relatively easily, especially with the herbicide that he has, and they thank him profusely for this, and he says that it's truly not a problem. Him, Appa, and Rautalia head down to defeat this giant monstrous plant, and immediately now Fumi just uses his, his water elemental powers to basically use the herbicide and put that within deep within the monster plant and once he does and basically puts the herbicide to the point where it's digested into the monster plant he sucks all the possible water out of the plant and making it so that the plant instantly dies every bit of water that it has it just crumbles to dust more or less and the plant is defeated and all the plants around are actually defeated as well now Fumi makes sure to clean up 
the best he possibly can using his earth elemental powers and this does give him a level or two in terms of his earth powers and he just blows away the, re the rest in the wind. And he heads back up to the village explaining what he did and they thank him so much for helping and he says it's really no problem and that it was a good way to basically get some extra XP and now he's about to basically be at a level of 30. So once he gets to level 30, he'll probably unlock his fire. And once he does that, he should be able to attack things relatively easier, actually far easier than some of the things he has currently. He gives the village some seeds and hopes that they can farm normally and actually gain some food and tells them that unfortunately, that's all he can really do. He can water the plants for them and make sure that everything is okay for now and maybe even put up some barriers around them if you if they want that as well in which they do take the offer and now fumi using his earth abilities or earth elemental powers actually puts up barricades around the the village after that he bids farewell or farewell and he heads off to his next place he needs to go the trader wants him to bring some merchandise to a hot spring so he does just that and he realizes that this steam, the, the hot of, I mean, obviously the water that's steaming, he's able to actually absorb that. And once he does, it actually does increase his level and actually further will increase his fire once he unlocks it. And absorbing all that steam, he was able to unlock that last bit of XP he needed, unlocking his fire ability and then gaining two levels immediately, being at a fire level of level three now. So he, be he now believes that he should be able to farm XP a lot easier and with his water abilities and actually air abilities, he can actually amplify the, the fire's power using his air abilities, but also tone it down with his water. So if he needs to put out something, he can easily do that. Now Fumi then hears word of something else, learning of a mysterious disease that is spreading through a village. Him and his party immediately go off to that village and when they arrive, they can actually smell the stench. And now Fumi begins blasting the stench away and it basically just travels it back up the mountain. And for now, it's definitely going to help the people there. He even puts an earth basically barricade above them so that this toxic air will just pass over them. He says that he fixed the problem temporarily and they should be filling pretty well and like soon coming up. But the only thing is, is there's probably something that's causing it. And they say that there definitely is a dragon that the sword hero Ren killed. He left the body and now it's rotting and it's basically decomposing and making the air completely toxic. So now Fumi decides to head up there with Appa and Rotalia and they quickly fly up and they see the dragon right there. Now Fumi says that he can actually just incinerate the body and then they can go about their day in which he puts out his hand to do so but the dragon begins to stand up. This thing isn't dead. Wait, no, it is dead. It's just a zombie. Now Fumi begins to blast it with fire but it does very minimal damage. Rotalia tries to slice at it as well and she does a little bit of damage too but nothing insane. Appa begins to smack it with his tail and Appa is able to sustain some damage to the monster but it seems like they're running out of options. This might be a harder fight than they expected. The dragon begins to fight back now, slashing and scratching at now Fumi, Raftalia and Appa but luckily they're able to dodge with relative ease as he's not extremely fast. He tells Raftalia that they need to bait out the dragon's fire. If they bait out the dragon's fire, now Fumi will jump in front of it. He might be able to absorb its power. Immediately, the dragon continues to fight back, but gets frustrated and begins to breathe fire at Appa. Appa immediately blasts air at the fire, and now Fumi, it basically is directed at now Fumi, and now Fumi is able to absorb it entirely, and the dragon continues to breathe the fire until there's like no fire left for him to breathe. Now Fumi's firepower is maxed out he didn't realize it would be this much and it also skyrocketed his level from a level of 30 to a level of 40 instantly basically so now he can get his next element but obviously he's not going to be thinking about that too much when he's fighting a giant dragon he sends that said firepower right back at the dragon and it begins to scorch him 
the fire begins to turn this black color and it begins to sustain on the dragon. It seems like the max fire ability actually created these black flames that are permanent or at least permanent until now Fumi it basically is extinguishes them. When, when, a, when an element is actually maxed out in level, he can use the element at all free will, more or less putting it to the point that he can light an entire forest on fire, but in one snap, it would be gone in an instant. That's how much control he would have at level 20. He begins to scorch the dragon and then eventually put it in this air pocket. That air pocket basically enforces the fire even more, completely melting the dragon down. And now Fumi keeps the dragon's remains in this air pocket and he's going to carry the dragon's body out more or less throughout this time. Now Fumi is thanked for his, his help completely that they wouldn't have been able to do anything without him and he says that it's truly no problem, anytime he can actually help he wants to do his part. He says he'll talk to Ren about what occurred and frankly the uh, another one of the heroes actually has a problem with not thinking things through before doing it so he'll speak with them so he promises this will never happen again and if it does he will handle it. And they thank him once again, and now Fumi begins to head off. During this time of travel though, now Fumi and his party decide to take a, take a break in this nice beautiful field. They fly back to the ground, and they basically begin to rest. The next morning though, they see a girl, and Appa begins running toward her, and, he, and she immediately hugs Appa, and Appa licks her on the face, and it's actually a little girl that's been playing with Philolios. Obviously, the Philolios run away when a giant creature like Appa runs toward them, but it seems like this little girl isn't afraid of Appa at all, and walks over with Appa and asks if there's any chance that they can guide her back to the capital, and maybe give her a ride if possible? And they say of course, but she's not afraid of heights, right? And she says why, and they explain that well, Appa is their flying mount. And she's shocked to hear that a, there's a flying bison, that she never heard of such a thing, that it must be super rare, and now Fumi says they are, and actually it takes years and years to actually get them to be fully grown, but since he's one of the heroes, it happened pretty quickly actually. And they decide that they're going to take Melty, which is the name she gives them, to back or back to the capital. And once they arrive, they let Melty and actually Appa run off for a little bit. Appa's pretty big and causes a little bit of destruction, but Melty doesn't mind. She can handle anything that will actually come out of that. And Nafumi just talks to Raftalia about maybe thinking about leveling her up and getting her class upgrade. They actually do need to do some power leveling. Frankly, they haven't been doing that recently, and they can do it pretty effectively. And for the next about 24 hours or so, they probably could. Maybe go to the, another village or fly with Appa to find a nice decently high level place. Raftalia finds this to be a great idea, they haven't done some hard power leveling in a long time, ever since the first wave frankly, and even the first wave was a lot of them learning their powers and especially Nafumi getting a hold of a lot of his powers. And he says speaking of that he actually can unlock another one, in which he has earth, fire, air, water, and now he can unlock one more and he's thinking about what he should do. Um, mm, maybe, maybe I'll do ice. Ice or lightning? Well, I feel like ice would be more beneficial, especially when I have water powers already. So now Fumi decides to unlock ice, in which actually seems to be more of a melee aspect of things, and actually has a nice AoE of slow. It's not too much projectiles in, in, a, in a way, but he can make ice spears, ice swords, and stuff like that when he gains more levels. As he's actually talking to Rotalia about this, someone comes out of nowhere and tries to strike him with a spear. It's Motoyasu, the spear hero. Now Fumi immediately separates them with an earth wall and pushes him backwards and tells him to stop. What does he think he's doing? And now Fumi is so confused, but Motoyasu says that he's thought about it, that he's not going to let him just keep the slaves that he has, he'll make sure that they get away. But as he says this, 
mine is behind him laughing and smirking at this idea and basically telling Naofumi that he doesn't even stand a chance, that Motoyasu is so much stronger now. But just as she says this, Melty comes back with royal guards and tells them to stop. She explains that she is the second princess and actually the heir apparent to the throne of the queen. And she explains that Malti, the one that's basically starting all this as she glares at her sister, says that her personality is too toxic and that's why she's basically not the next in line. And Malti tells her little sister to get out of here that th these are older people things. And Melty disagrees that they're fighting like children so they should be treated like them. She tells Naofumi not to worry about them, that she'll handle everything that needs to be handled and that he has a plan and that he needs to do some things. He's kind of shocked that Melty is actually the princess and actually the heir apparent to the throne, but he doesn't really question much of it. He doesn't really care necessarily. He thinks that she's a good girl and actually thanks her for the help and is just kind of surprised and even tells her that. And she says she's sorry for not telling him sooner, but she didn't want to say things like that, especially out and about. And he understands. He explains to her that they need to go get some training done, and that's why they're actually going to be heading out right now. With a limited time before the next wave, and him even checking how much time is left, he needs to go and go to a nice place where they can train and power level as much as possible. In which they do just that. For the next, you could say 30-35 hours, they actually power level like crazy. With Appa, Raftali, and Naofumi, it's a perfect unison. He has this spread aura with his fire, and he can even encapsulate more and more monsters using his water, and slowly but surely will defeat monsters like that. And basically leave openings for Appa and Raftalia to strike them down, and they gain XP as well. They're all gaining XP in perfect unison, and they get Naofumi actually up to a level of 50, getting him another element which he chooses to pick lightning. Now that he has lightning, he doesn't really have a way to level it up. He has some simple electricity and he actually can shock people when he touches them. But in terms of like actually raw power, it's hard to gain more and more electricity and lightning. Frankly, there's not much electricity in this world at the moment anyways, but he'll figure out a way to do such a thing. Ratalia is actually at a level of 40 now and so is Appa. With basically no time to spare, they head back and begin preparing fully for this next wave. They begin talking to, to Elhard and, and basically getting everything set up in terms of potions, armor, and anything they can possibly think of. And eventually they head out once again to Loot Village, in which it already has reinforcements, so this wave should be relatively easy in terms of that and most monsters won't even be able to get in, and now Fumi will just fly around with Appa, basically shooting fire at all of them, destroying it, or destroying any monsters he possibly can. But when that wave starts, it's as easy as they thought it would be. It's very simple, they're defending Loot Village as if it was nothing, and even now Fumi and Appa are flying around killing more monsters at various different villages at really fast speeds. And if he even burns a house, he just immediately gets rid of the fire, so it's extremely convenient. But it seems like whatever the boss monster is, is giving the other heroes some trouble because they haven't even killed it yet. So now Fumi, Appa, and Raftalia take off and tell Loot Village to be safe and actually use anything at their disposal that they were given. They say they'll be fine, that they have enough people there to actually protect them. So they're able to basically defend themselves as Naofumi and his party head off to the main source of the wave or the main monster. When they arrive, they see a Dutchman's ship with a Dutchman on it, but they're all arguing, saying that no, this is how you we're going to get the boss to come out, and no, no, this is how it's going to happen, and they're not agreeing on anything, and they can't figure out anything, and Rotalia immediately points something out. Using her magic, she's able to spot a shadow right behind the Dutchman, and that is the main source of the boss. She immediately stabs it, and something comes out. It's the Soul Eater. The Soul Eater begins to try and attack them, but now Fumi encapsulates it in, a, in a, this sphere of wind and begins to incinerate the monster. Luckily, his firepower is overwhelmingly more powerful than basically his other elements, 
and this does make killing this boss monster very convenient in which the other heroes say that they could have taken it out he didn't need to finish it all he had to do was basically show where that boss monster was but i guess they'll get the chance when another one shows up now fumi backs up immediately basically ready to set up another attack but the other heroes say no need they begin trying to attack the soul eater but nothing happens. They can't injure it, they're not strong enough to do so, and it seems like they're lacking something. Actually, they're lacking a lot of something. Now, Fumi realizes that just because their level is high, it is even higher than now Fumi's at this point, doesn't mean they're strong. They're lacking a lot of experience with their own weapons. Now, Fumi, on the other hand, spent a lot of time learning his elements. Yes, he doesn't have as much experience with like lightning and ice, but in terms of water, he has insane experience. And now with fire, he has insane experience as well. Earth, obviously, he just uses it for barricades and such. But as he grows more and more, he'll gain more experience with that as well. All his elements, he's been gaining experience. Literal and, and XP. So both types of experience. But as he realizes that these heroes are not going to be able to kill this soul eater, he goes to blast it with fire. But before he does... It's like stabbed in multiple areas with these energy like beams. No, they're cutting through them like it's they're like energy blades. It doesn't matter. Where are they even coming from? These beams of some sorts and the thing. No, the person that is creating these beams or these blades of energy begins to hover down. And that woman is named Glass. She's wearing a black kimono, wielding two twin bladed war fans. The true enemy of this wave has just arrived. Glass easily defeats the other three heroes in the party and immediately ch challenges Naofumi and his party, saying that Naofumi is the only one she's curious about. The rest of them kind of suck. They're not strong and it seems like they don't even take this seriously. They're not even a threat. Now Fumi on the other hand has intent to his attacks. Immediately now Fumi traps her in this capsule of water trying to suffocate her, but she's able to just break free like it's nothing. She shakes her head saying that it's not gonna be that simple. And now Fumi begins to combine his wind and fire blasting at her and she begins to feel this, making her dodge and basically going to attack Naofumi, but Raftalia is able to hit her away slightly as he blasts her with wind, slamming her into the deck of the boat. She's able to stand up and begins her onslaught on Naofumi and his party. Appa is able to get them away by flying them away, but this isn't going very well. Maybe in raw power, Naofumi can actually keep up, but Naofumi's defenses aren't insane. If he gets hit by one of these blows, it's going to hurt like hell he's trying to find any way to make it so his defense can go up he has no way of doing such a thing until well another blast strikes him in the back and it lands straight on and goes sending him flying into a mountain and when he lands in the mountain he lands among all of the earth all of the ground he can feel the ground begin to surround to surround him completely it's as if it's armoring him. What the hell is even going on? I'm not even doing this. It begins to form on his body, and now Fumi walks, walks back out in this coat of earth and nature. He jumps out and lands on Appa, in which he's slightly heavier, by slightly, I mean probably 30 pounds heavier. He turns toward glass, and when she shoots another beam, he's able to swat it away jumping off of Appa, charging back at Glass, landing a clean blow to her face. And the real fight is about to begin. They begin striking each other down, and now Fumi and his defense actually has skyrocketed. Unfortunately, he's slightly slower, but he's able to make up for this using his wind powers, basically using it to move side to side faster and actually slowing down the battlefield, well, in terms of Glass, slowing her down. And also, even his ice powers do that as well. The wind powers are able to basically directionally slow her down if he predicts where she's moving, but the ice powers are actually slowing her down in increments, you could say. But even with that said, 
like it's just a stalemate. Nobody's winning, nobody's really losing. Frankly, Naofumi has the defense to take the brunt of the attacks, and Naofumi can't really land a clean blow onto Glass. This then leads to the wave pulling Glass back in, and actually the fight just ending in that said stalemate. With, the, with that fight completely over, the wave is over as well, and Naofumi is, is confused at who Glass is specifically. Where did she come from? She's able to leave within the wave? No monster has been really able to do that, ever. So how is she able to do that? These are questions for another time, and maybe nobody even has these answers. Maybe only Glass. But with the wave over, everybody is invited back to the castle, but the king is mad. The king is pissed, and begins questioning Naofumi, saying that he's been hiding something. Naofumi shakes his head, saying he hasn't been hiding anything. How would he hide something? And he says that he's just been training, working, and he can explain how his powers work, but that won't change the fact that he's strong. He's strong because these other heroes are not using their abilities properly. Not at all. And it seems like they don't realize that you need to master techniques for them to be actually beneficial to you. He tells the king this, but the king still doesn't believe him, saying that that just can't be the case. He has to be doing something. There has to be something underlying that he's doing. And he says that if Nafumi won't tell him, he might not be able to kill him, but he can damn well kill his party members. Nafumi lifts up his left hand, and fire begins to rise within, within that hand. You threaten my party members again? I'm gonna burn all of this down. Don't mess with me. I've done everything by you all. I haven't done anything wrong, but everybody seems to think that I have. That's what I'm not dealing with anymore. So watch what you say to me, Mr. King, or else. Now Fumi goes to leave, and the king tells him to stop. Stop at this once, but now Fumi doesn't listen. He walks out the giant door, and when walking down the staircase, he's greeted by something. Greeted by a shadow. A shadow gives him this small emblem. He looks at the emblem and is confused for a second and goes to ask the, the shadow what is this about and she looks saying that, she's, that he's smart, he'll figure it out. She immediately disappears and he stares at the emblem. This emblem is the one of the three heroes church, showing only the sword, the spear, and the bow. What even could this mean? What will Naofumi have to do? Is the church the underlying problem? And how will Naofumi even stop them? The emblem of the three heroes church in hand, Naofumi heads off. Heads off with his party and begins to believe that this has to have something to do with everything that's occurring. The reason why everybody is being the way they are toward Naofumi. There has to be a major reason. And this time he decides that even though his party is level 40, going to actually get that class upgrade is going to just slow them down that he should go somewhere else he's heard that maybe these other dragon hourglasses appear in other places so that's what he's gonna do he begins taking ravtalia and appa and they begin heading out but before they fly off they're actually stopped it's melty melty and a bunch of royal guards melty begins to run over explaining that they need to reconcile with the king and that that everybody has to be on the same page, they can't just argue like this. Now Fumi shakes his head, saying that even if he wanted to, that's far from going to happen. He threatened Nafumi's party to the point where he cannot be forgiven. Melty continues to try to plead her case, but as she does this, Nafumi sees something behind her. Some royal guard is about to stab her in the back, but Nafumi immediately puts an ice wall right in front of him then an earth wall to follow it up and push all the knights away, throwing Melty on Appa and he hops on as well, pulling Raftalia up and they fly off towards Shield Frieden. Melty asks what's going on and he says that's, well, it seems like those guards are going to try and assassinate her. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's going to happen. And, well, now Fumi is the only one that can really protect her. She looks at Raftalia and Raftalia even nods saying that it's obvious that they were basically just put it, pulling her out there to kill her and then blame it on Naofumi. 
Melty begins to kind of shed a tear and asks who the hell would do that. And Nafubi shakes his head. Raltalia looks at Melty and says that she knows who would try to do that. So they head over to then shield Frieden via flying, of course. But Melty says they need to go speak with the queen, that th this needs to happen now. They need to tell her what's going on. And well, Nafumi says that their class upgrades are just as important. They can go right after. But Melty insists, and Nafumi eventually caves in, and they change course to go talk to the queen. But this time, they're in mid-air, and frankly, nobody's going to actually be able to keep up with them. So they do make it to where the queen currently is. And when they make it, they begin speaking with the queen. Speaking, speaking to her about everything that's occurring, and she apologized profusely for everything that's happening. But now Fumi shakes his head. Look, that's not why I'm here. Frankly, you need to keep your daughter safe. Your daughter needs to stay here and be safe as well, and I'm sure she's going to be safer, well, with you than with a fugitive like me. The queen disagrees, saying that he is no fugitive, far, far in between that, and that Melty should be with him. That he's probably the only one that has the power to protect. Plus, she doesn't know how many of these people actually betrayed her. And frankly, it's obvious that the Three Heroes Church has done the same. Now, Fumi nods, saying that that's his plan. He wants to go to Shield Frieden, get their class upgrades, and he's going to jump at the action of defeating the Three Heroes Church now. And the Queen says that that's a good idea, but will he be able to do it in time? He nods, basically saying that this isn't basically, this is all a time crunch. They need to make sure that they don't single out the heroes quick enough, and Naofumi needs to defeat the source of what's going on, and that's the Pope. Naofumi takes Raftalia and Appa once again, and tells Melty that he'll be back for her, that it's only going to be less than a day. He promises that. The Queen says that she will not be leaving her daughter's side in the meantime, and he immediately leaves and heads over to the main source, the Three Heroes Church, but more importantly, to basically trade blows with the Pope. He realizes that the Pope is actually elsewhere setting something up, and he sees the master quote-unquote plan that the Pope is in, in process of making. He sees tons and tons of his followers lined up, about to basically feed into this weapon of some sorts. He begins to hover over all these followers and tells Raftalia, or asks her what they should do. Should he just kill them all, or should he try to encapsulate them? Maybe he can do it. Raftalia says that avoiding killing is probably for the best. So now Fumi decides to make water appear everywhere, try to cover the entirety of the, this army in water, and then freeze them all into encapsulation. He wants to make sure that they're out of the picture immediately, so he'll deal with them after. Immediately after that, he dives toward the Pope with his with Appa. They strike the Pope and basically detain him instantly. The Pope looks to basically see where his followers are and ask them for strength, but he sees that all of them are captured. How the hell? How'd you know? How'd you know about this? No one's supposed to know about this. How did you figure this out, you demon? But now Fumi then looks at the Pope and shakes his head that he's no demon. He puts restraints on him and says that the Queen will be handling him, and don't worry, none of his followers are going to be dead. He brings the Pope to the Queen soon after, and he's basically imprisoned for more or less treason, basically saying that this Pope had full intentions of trying to take over the kingdom. Now Fumi says that now that's all said and done, the other followers, well, they're kind of encapsulated in, well, ice, so they need soldiers over there right now. So they then basically exchange ideas and they head over with all the, the soldiers and now Fumi dethaws everybody and they're all arrested. This whole sequence with the church happens a lot quicker and ironically enough is all because he has Appa and all because he can fly and travel at way better paces and that he can actually travel through the skies and not really worry about being taken down, not easy, but not easily by any means and at a really fast rate. Now that with that, now that's all said and done, now Fumi believes that he just needs a train. Frankly, this whole thing with glass has really opened his eyes, and going back to Shield Frieden and obviously getting his class upgrades is a big major step. 
in which he does just that and speaks with the local people, hearing of these other ways. He apologizes that they weren't able to help, but he's still trying to get fig figure things out for himself, and that he has a lot to figure out on his own, but he promises that he's going to help in any ways he possibly can in the near future. But this visit to Shield Frieden would go south really quickly. On the way out of there, he's actually taken, taken out of the sky by some magical an anklet of some sort, and this takes Appa down. Appa goes spiral spiraling back down, crashing into the ground, and there it is. Ren, Itsuki, and Motoyasu stand there with an army. They say that basically to give Melty back now and that they kidnapped her. But Nafumi disagrees. Nafumi says that it seems like her older sister set her up and tried to get Melty killed, so he won't be giving her back, especially not when she's safe. The queen already knows about this, staring daggers into mine. Mine says that that's a, that's a lie, that why would you tell the queen something that's a lie? And Nafumi says that it wasn't a lie, and they have proof of it. Frankly, the queen and the shadows have been watching this whole time, and their little visit to the queen proved that exactly. And well, mine is shocked to hear this, and Ren and Itsuki stare at mine in confusion. They basically put down their weapons and apologize for doing that to Naofumi and taking him down. But Motoyasu believes otherwise, saying that he must be lying, but he's obviously not. A bunch of them, uh, who are still loyal to Motoyasu, are about to go charge at Naofumi, but someone gets them to stop. That someone is the arrival of the queen. Not only that, but all the people that are loyal to her. Immediately mine, and obviously eventually the king, are taken into custody. In which Naofumi thanks, thanks, thanks her for the help, and Ren and Itsuki apologize on behalf of everybody that, that did this to him. And in which Naofumi says that it's truly fine, sometimes you can only see one side of the story because you weren't able to hear the other side. And he gets how it may have looked in the situation, but he did what he needed to do in that in that moment to make sure Melty was safe. In which they basically thank him for this, especially because they weren't able to help at all either. He actually throws something to Ren and says that he actually handled another business. He looks at it. The Church of the Three Heroes. What is this for? It's simple, actually. They were behind a lot of this. It seems like mine and the king were in cahoots with them as well, but the Church of the Three Heroes wanted to do far more, far more than just, well, obviously, help the king and the princess out. They actually wanted to take over the kingdom. And, well, I was able to put a stop to it before it actually occurred. And Ren and Itsuki are actually impressed to hear this and say that they definitely have a lot to learn from Naofumi. At least that's what they've realized now. Of course, to a certain extent, they're still pretty cocky in their own way, but hearing this and seeing exactly what Naofumi is doing, especially with no past recursor or past bad thing he's gone through, Naofumi is pretty reliable at this, at this sort, but just as everybody begins to leave, Naofumi's actually stopped. Appa begins to turn around and fly away toward a certain direction, in which Naofumi and Raftalia and Melty run after him, wondering what's even going on, and someone's actually calling out to Appa, and immediately they're transported somewhere else, transported to this sanctuary, the sanctuary of the Philolios, in which there's a woman or a girl in front of them, and she says that her name is Vitoria. Vitoria begins to explain to them that there are a lot of bad people throughout this entire country, and many country alike, but now Fumi is doing his best, and she thanks him for that, and it seems like he is trying to quote-unquote reconcile with all the heroes and get them on the same page. She understands that it's difficult, but it is definitely in the right direction. She approaches Nafumi and thanks him once again, and says that, well, you could say they have her blessing. She approaches Appa and pats him on the head, and it seems like Appa grows in strength greatly, and begins to change. Appa begins to change into a normal little kid? Seems like to be a normal boy. And she explains that Appa will be her successor. 
It's a little different, of course, compared to her normal Fololeal successor, but this will work just as well, and Appa will gain great, gain great strength because of it. And, well, obviously they're shocked to see this, but they thank her profusely for it, that this is going to help in the future waves, and she says that, of course it will, but he needs to promise that they're going to basically make up. The other heroes and him, they will make up, and then eventually they'll be able to fight the waves in every country. He promises that even if they don't make up, he'll be strong enough to defeat all the other country's waves and make sure to take that burden off of her back. And she smiles, thanking him and thanking, frankly, his whole party, and says that they can now leave. He'll, she'll transport them back to the kingdom. He nods, and with that promise made, they're transported back to, to the Melramark kingdom. When they arrive, the queen is actually under investigation, or investigating the king and the, and the princess mine. Basically, finding out that they basically were part of the whole Three Heroes Church plan, and that they committed treason, treason as well, punishing them do how, they, how she believes to be proper punishment. And now Fumi says that obviously execution isn't really his style. Of course, she can choose whatever she wants to do, but he doesn't recommend execution. In which she actually does thank him in the later on for this and tells him to basically hang out, relax, and they'll speak about about everything that's going on in the very near future. And about, I would say, a week would pass. Everybody, including obviously Nafumi, Raftalia, even Melty and Appa, they actually begin training. Nafumi has Melty in his party currently, but says that it's probably not the best to have Melty fight with him. She can definitely be of a lot of help, but she, but he also doesn't want her to get hurt. And Melty basically tells him to stop treating her like a kid, that she is a princess, and he basically says that she kind of contradicted himself that most princesses are young anyways, so frankly, she's kind of a kid. And she kind of gets frustrated about this, but now Fumi and his party kind of laugh about it. Now that Appa can actually like speak to them, it is kind of odd seeing Appa that way, especially when it's a little kid with horns. He has like these horns that stick out of his head, and he has insane air air bending type of powers. He's not exactly sure how that would even work, especially because he always assumed that the air bending came from his tail, but he guesses that it just transferred over. After about a week of pretty hard training, because now Fumi wanted to level them up as much as possible, Rautalia and Appa are almost at a level of 60, and now Fumi is at a level of 60, and he's basically unlocked, at least unlocked every element, but hasn't upgraded every element. He's starting to upgrade his water to max, which his water is about to be max, his ice close to max as well. A lot of the elements are almost at max capacity, which is good to see. But with a meeting with obviously the other heroes and the queen fastly approaching, he needs to find a new way to basically level up. And it seems like his prayers are answered when they're all brought in for a four heroes council meeting. They begin speaking about everything, about what's been going on and about how Naofumi is not at the forefront of anything. And that Ren and Itsuki even back him up about this and look at Motoyasu, telling him that this woman, mine, she's not a very pleasant person, and that she's being punished under that reason specifically. That she is actually was part of the reason why the church was almost fled right into power. And the queen not, saying that this is very, very true. And unfortunately, her daughter, and in the absence of the queen, it led to this specifically. This power struggle that the princess, or the second princess, was basically trying to get herself into. Motoyasu still does not understand, but the queen says that he's going to have to understand quickly, because frankly, they don't have enough time to bicker about things that are just facts. The queen then begins to tell them that there's something coming up. There's something called the special event called Calmira Archipelago event, and they're all invited, where everybody's going to gain bonus experience points. In which Naofumi is astounded to hear this, especially because he was just thinking about the fact that he doesn't have the time to really boost his levels up quick enough before this next wave, or doesn't really have an area to do so. So given this opportunity, the four heroes jump at this at this this possible opportunity, 
and they head over to Kalmira. Now Fumi then gets on the ship, and unfortunately the other people that are there, or the other heroes, already took all the bunks, so he had to actually share with someone else. And these people that he had to share with go by the name of Lark, Berg, and Therese. These two people are interesting to Naofumi. He's not so sure, he can't put his finger on it, but they feel extremely powerful, and on top of that, they feel odd, familiar. But even with that in mind, he introduces himself as, well, the legendary elemental hero by the name of Naofumi. And they're shocked to even hear this, but they don't necessarily believe him. Really? Naofumi? I mean, that's uh, not the best alias. I mean, there's no way that you're actually the legendary elemental hero. And now Fumi kind of rolls his eyes and says that they can think whatever they want, and he doesn't really mind. But after they get off the boat, now Fumi has no intention of seeing these people again. Him and his party, obviously Appa and Rotalia, go out immediately to check to check anything they possibly can, and they begin training, training at the highest level places he he even knows about grouping up every single monster and just lighting them ablaze, and on top of this, he absorbed practically so much water. He jumped into the giant ocean that's there, or this giant like pond or lake, whatever you want to call it, and begins absorbing water and maxes it out, obviously, and in, in which he has most of his stuff maxed out now. His ice, his water, his air, his fire, four completely completely maxed out and could do some really insane things and on top of that he's slowly but surely working on getting these other things maxed out lightning being a really hard one to max out earth not so much he's on his way to actually maxing that out but there's various things that are going to come at uh, basically the expense of of a lot of different training including his lightning Obviously, he has to kind of make his own lightning rod, and that's the only way to absorb lightning, and that obviously has to do with really bad weather. So, frankly, it's not perfect, and it won't happen immediately, but it is happening over time. With even lightning at level 4, it is definitely beneficial, though. He can use it to actually kill tons and tons of ocean monsters instantly, gaining mass amounts of XP, getting Appa and Raftalia to a max level of 60, and also himself to a level of 75 and this was only after like two days of training after this lark and therese actually meet up with them asking if they can join in which they do they begin training together and now fumi doesn't really ha didn't have intentions of even leveling up with these people but they seem like nice people so he decides to just let them tag along in which he finds that they're very very strong but, it, but even Lark and Therese realize how strong Naofumi actually is, and it seems like he's not even trying. He's actually just half-assing it, you can say? He doesn't need to actually try his hardest, and he feels that his other party members need the training more, or at least the experience more. So that continues on for a while. Naofumi gets Raftalia a new weapon, and so and he does the same with Appa, getting their stuff revamped and deciding that one day they're gonna actually take this time to basically just relax. So they decide they're gonna relax on the beach, hang out, and during this time, Naofumi decides to just dive underwater. Being able to actually breathe underwater using the oxygen from the water and encapsulating his head. And he's able to just swim under at insane speeds because of his basically high elemental of water until he sees this odd temple a temple that does not look too good he basically soars back up telling Raftali and appa about this putting these bubbles on their heads as well and they go diving down there but when they arrive they see that this temple has a dragon hourglass and this dragon hourglass is counting down counting down to the next wave that is due at Kalmira, which is in 48 hours. He does definitely thinks this is not good, so immediately he goes back to the queen and she amasses a large naval fleet. He begins to instruct anybody basically that can fight of the plans that are ahead. He will handle the most of the monsters that are in the water. He has a plan for that, so everybody needs to stay out of the water and get them all kited to a certain area. If any of them fall in the water, they will die with those monsters as well, and frankly, he can't do anything about it. They all are confused at what he's, they're hearing, but he says that he has a power or 
basically a lightning power that basically electrocutes the water and will be able to kill a lot of those smaller fish army and injure the main boss and then he can basically vortex the main boss at the very end of it and that's even without the other heroes help he's not even including them really in his plan and says that they can help well any way they can figure out to help that he should be able to handle this as well but he won't exclude them entirely the queen nods thinking that this this guy he's extremely powerful it's not only surprising but makes her feel a lot more confident in everything that's going on but with that said it's now time for the wave to begin with their ships going down and basically traveling toward the next wave he looks to his right to see lark and therese on their own ship but lark and therese give off this aura of not wanting to look at naofumi that maybe they're going to do something drastic and this makes naofumi uneasy he begins to think that maybe these people are they like glass if they are this might get really bad but he's hoping for the best maybe they're just being misunderstood by him but you never know in this world especially they arrive and the wave begins the wave begins to basically send tons and tons of fish monsters and nafumi takes this lightning bolt and throws it at the water this immediately kills if not kills all of the monsters in the water excluding the main boss now fumi begins to use the water into his advantage throwing himself to a ship near the main boss and the other heroes begin to strike at the main boss but this main fish boss is not even touched by it and frankly nafumi was worried about this that they don't basically have the power to execute what they need to do now Fumi begins to create this vortex, but just as he begins to do this, Lark goes and defeats the boss in one foul swoop. He looks toward Lark and basically just tosses himself over there using the water, and Raftalia follows with Appa with, on top of Appa. He tells Lark that he did good, but he assumes that something else is about to occur. Lark nods and says that he's a smart boy, smart kiddo. But unfortunately, they're going to have to die here. But, you know, those three over there are basically not even worth killing. Really, it's only Nafumi. He's the only threat at the moment. Nafumi agrees that he is the only threat. But unfortunately, Lark, unfortunately, you are in a really bad spot. Nafumi begins to create a vortex around them, surrounding the entire environment in water. You are in my domain, Lark. The farthest thing from it. You are far from home, and that's pretty obvious. Unfortunately, at least. Water then pulls Therese under, underneath, and he tells Nafumi to give her back right now, but she's gone. She is sucked into a whirlpool, and Nafumi put her somewhere else. Then Lark gets sucked away as well, and it's as if they're underwater with nothing they can do. Now Fumi has complete control over the situation. That's until someone takes a blast at Now Fumi, but he's able to block it with his earth wall, looking up to see Glass. Glass is here and is shocked to see what he's doing to her comrades, thinking that Now Fumi is officially out of their league, far out of their league. Now Fumi tells her that he will bring them back up as long as they promise to leave and that's an order they need to leave now glass says that they can't leave that he needs to die here but now fumi shakes his head i'm way too strong for you to kill me here it's not possible you won't defeat me but whatever's going on i want to help just like i'm helping my world i've dealt with people worse than you ironically enough and you're trying to kill me but frankly i don't mind you three Therese is pretty sweet. Lark calls me kiddo, which kind of is annoying. You, you truly haven't done anything. You gave me a good fight, that's for sure. But I want to help. I don't want to kill you three. If I have to, I will, for the sake of my world. But I do want to do more than just that. I want to save you people. I want to save everybody here to the best of my ability. And well glass doesn't even know what to say 
Glass just got hit with some talk no jutsu or something. And <laughs> that's a joke, but sort of. Glass hears what he's saying, and frankly, she's not in a position to negotiate, and she's going to have to accept his deal. Immediately, Nafumi places Lark and Therese back up on the, the, the giant fish, and they weren't even gasping for air. Nafumi had no intention of killing them. He dragged them down and actually gave them a way to breathe, just gave them, gave them no way to get out. Lark and Therese tell Glass that he, they're okay, and that maybe... This is not a fight that they should be taking. In which Glass agrees, saying that they're kind of out of their league at the moment. And just as she says this, they all three jump through the wave, saying that maybe, just maybe, they'll take well, they'll take Nafumi up on the offer. They leave, and Nafumi stands there in basically victory, in very easy victory, ironically enough. And frankly, that fight hopefully will be the last one between the otherworldly heroes. With the fight completely finished and over, all the ships begin to converge once again and leave. But they begin to speak, or the other heroes begin to speak to Nafumi, asking why he didn't kill them, but he says that they're just like them. I mean, frankly, they're just trying to save their world. That's what they want. But it would be too wrong of him to actually kill them, at least not right now. He, he's too strong for them to beat at the moment, and frankly, he'll be able to handle it. Especially if it happens in the water again. It's not even close. But with that said and done, Nafumi looks on and begins to think about what's to come of this elemental hero, of himself. What's going to happen in the near future? What trials and tribulations will he go through? Well, that's a story for another day. And that's a wrap for what if Nafumi was the legendary elemental hero.